In one of my recent videos, I talked about the Expo 52 upgrade. I talked about all the awesome new features in the upgrade. I also encouraged you not to upgrade to Expo 52, at least for a month or two until they work out some bugs. There seems to be a lot of issues being worked out currently. In this video, I wanna talk about what if you want to go ahead and upgrade to Expo 52 without breaking your app. For the comment section of this video, I'd like it to be a place for us to help each other out. If you are upgrading to Expo 52 and a package was broken, please let us know in the comments below. If you found out the solution, let us know the solution. If you're really struggling with something, just post a question about something that's broken, ask for help, and it would be really helpful if you checked out the comment section and thumbed up all the posts that you found really helpful or all the questions that you thought were great questions so that the best comments get to the top comments list. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can stay in Expo 51 and still use things like Expo Go, or you can upgrade to 52 and fix any broken packages you have. I had an app that broke when I upgraded to 52. In this video, we're gonna go through fixing it. First, if you were not ready to upgrade to Expo 52, maybe you have an older app that you don't update much for a client or something like that, but maybe you wanna make some minor updates every once in a while. Your first option is to just not upgrade and stay in Expo Expo 51 or below. One of the comments I saw regularly on my video was, I didn't want to upgrade to 52, but the Expo Go app on my iPhone stopped working with an error that there is version incompatibility. I did see that on my Android phone as well. It looks like this. The thing to know about this is it's possible to downgrade to an earlier version of Expo Go. You'll notice down here, it says, learn how to install Expo Go for SDK 51. To do that, you're going to have to install an older version of Expo Go that is compatible with your current project. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that link. So this is currently on an Android device. So it tells me the first step is to uninstall Expo Go if you already have it installed. I went ahead and uninstalled the old version of Expo Go, and now I'm going to install the new version. Now this is on Android. After you install an APK file, you need to open up downloads or files on your Android app. Click on the downloaded APK file. That will start installing the app. Then you can click install, click open. And now I'm gonna try to open my app again. And as you can see, now my older app that's Expo 51 is now working on my Expo Go APK file that I just downloaded. So this is how you could stay in Expo 51 or below if maybe you have an older app that you don't really wanna go through the hassle of upgrading to 52. But notice this user said it was broken on his iPhone specifically. iPhones don't have that way to to download an APK file. To do kind of the same thing with iPhones, you would need to download what's called a development build. I just made a video on how to do that. I'll link that in the description below. But another option is you can still use an iPhone simulator. And you'll notice this is working for me. I opened this app up using Expo Go on my iOS simulator and it worked fine. The way to get an iOS simulator, if you don't already, is to just download Xcode and iOS simulators come installed with it. I'm sure you can find a video on how to do that. If you'd like me to make a video on that, please let me know in the comments below. The last option to stay in Expo 51 or below is to use the web option. You can type W and then you'll notice the web version of your app comes up. And as you can see, it updates instantly. So using the web version of your app is a good way to basically replace Place Expo Go. And if you want to make sure it looks like an app, you can inspect the page, right click, click inspect, and then pick what kind of phone you want it to look like in case you haven't done that before. But now say you do want to upgrade to 52 without breaking your app. First off, it's just good to know your app might break, but it seems like there are ways to fix it. But it's a good idea to just know you're probably going to need a lot of time to update all your software to make sure it works in Expo 52. So don't get started on this unless you're ready to do that. If this is like an older app, I would say just stay in 51 or below. But if you are actively maintaining an app and you need to go ahead and pull off the Band-Aid, that's what we're going to be doing together for the rest of this video. I just upgraded an app and it broke for me. I'm gonna try to fix it and give you guys any tips that I came across. Before I do, I wanna give a quick shameless plug for nativenotify.com. Nativenotify.com is about three and a half years old. And in those three and a half years of time, there have been at least three major breaking changes to Expo push notifications. We've basically had to rebuild our push notification system three times. And with Expo 52, 
we also had to make some major updates to keep Native Notify up to date. I say all of that to say, I highly encourage you guys to check out nativenotify.com. It's by far the simplest way to add push notifications to your Expo apps. And instead of worrying about having to maintain your push notifications, you can just focus on coding and let us handle the push notifications for you. We will make sure that your push notifications are always up to date, working. This is literally all we do. So again, I encourage you to check out nativenotify.com. Again, for this next part, if you are upgrading and you fix anything, please help us out by commenting below. Expo in their blog about Expo 52 put out a guide for how to upgrade from 51 to 52. We're gonna follow this guide together. The first thing it said is to globally install EAS CLI. So I'm gonna open up my terminal and globally install EAS CLI. This will make sure that EAS is up to date on your computer. Next, it says to install Expo 52 with a dash dash fix. So I'm gonna come to my app and run that. And as you can see, there was a lot of conflicting packages that they needed to fix. It says to check your package.json to verify that there are no resolutions slash overrides. For example, you should remove Metro and Metro Resolver overrides if you have added them for Expo Router in a previous SDK. Additionally, if you previously configured your metro.config.js to work well in a mono repo, it says they recommend reading the updated work with mono repos guide to see if you need to make any changes. I don't believe I've done any of these things for my current app, so I'm gonna skip that step. Next, it says to run Expo Doctor latest. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. If you ever see an error for validate packages against React Native Directory package metadata, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's an issue. It just means an NPM package has not submitted their app to the React Native Directory yet. So you can ignore errors like that. The next step is to refer to the deprecations, renamings, and removals sections above for breaking changes. So for example, in this article, there's a deprecations section. It's saying push notifications won't work in Expo Go specifically for SDK version 53. They still do work in 52 as of right now with warnings. And so for example, native notify push notifications do work in 52 and they'll continue to work into the future. But once they get to 53, you're no longer going to be able to test push notifications in an Expo Go app, you're gonna have to use a development build, which again, I made a video about, I put it in the description below. Google Maps will no longer work in Expo Go, some other packages. So these are all breaking changes. If you find that you have a package in this list, you're probably gonna have to migrate. So for example, if you're using Expo Camera Legacy, you're going to have to migrate to Expo Camera and so on. You can just look through all of these they also say to be checking the change log for all other breaking changes. You can click on this link right here and it takes you to the change log and it lists all these breaking changes. Make sure to upgrade Expo to the latest version if needed. If you are already using development builds with Expo Dev Client, go ahead and create a new development build after you upgrade. They're really emphasizing if you're using Expo Go, start using development builds instead. Again, I made a video on how to do that. It's not that difficult. The first time you set it up is kind of difficult for iPhones, but after you have it set up, it works just like Expo Go. If you're having trouble, you can refer to the Troubleshoot Your SDK Upgrade Guide. When you click on that, it will take you here. One of the first things it says is to go ahead and migrate to development builds before you upgrade. So it may be a good idea to watch that video on how to create a development build. Start using that before upgrading because they're already saying a lot of things just might not work in Expo Go. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and test out now that I've upgraded everything. I'm going to see if it will work now. I'm still in Expo Go for this test. I'm currently testing on an Android. If you see yellow warnings like this, it means it'll still work currently, but they'll stop working in SDK 53. Okay, so my uh, fetch calls still aren't working, but I am using Expo Go. I'm gonna try switching to a development build for Android and see if maybe that fixes it. Now I went through all of these steps in the other video in the link description below, but basically you have to run EAS build platform. I'm gonna run an Android development build. You need to also say dash dash profile 
file development, that will make sure that it runs a development build. Again, I would just encourage you to watch the video I made. I'm gonna test to see if maybe everything works in development build and it just doesn't work in Expo Go anymore. You'll notice when the build is finished, it'll ask you if you wanna open it on an emulator. I'm gonna say yes. And it ought to download the app onto an Android emulator. Alternatively, you could open this up on an Android device to download what's called an APK file. So now over here, make sure your server is running by saying NPX Expo Start. You should be able to click this button right here. And what that does is it just connects to this server that you have running here. And there you go, as you can see, it's running. And so a development build really isn't that complicated. Let's see if it will update instantly. And if it ever doesn't work, you can click the R button to refresh the app. You can always try to close the app and open it back up. Okay, and there it was, I'll try again, dev build. And there you go, as you can see, it updates instantly. Now you'll notice for things like push notifications, it still says you need to use a physical device. And I can verify it's working on my phone too. And it is updating instantly on my phone too. One final thing I did wanna say is this actually did not fix my broken app. Even after upgrading to 52, following all the steps that Expo provided, my fetch requests still personally do not work. And so what I would say is the safest possible way to upgrade to 52 is to create a brand new app using NPX Create Expo app. Just create a brand new app from scratch that creates an Expo 52 app because what I can say is when I do that, everything works. So if I create an Expo 52 app and then install push notifications, for example, the push notifications work fine. All my uh, fetch requests work fine. So it may take some extra time, but what I really think you should do is NPX create Expo app and then make sure to Expo install everything. Go to your package.json file, NPX Expo install all of your packages so that it will install the packages that are right for Expo 52 and then just one by one copy over your code. That's what I personally would do. I think it probably would take longer, but it, it's a way to kind of guarantee everything is gonna work in the end. For some reason, when you upgrade from 51 to 52, at least in my experience, there's been a lot of issues. So like I said, even after going through this video, uh, I think this is probably the best way to do it. If you wanna try to upgrade to 52, you can follow the steps in this video and try to just work out any issues. But like I said, even after going through all that, all the instructions that Expo 52 gave my app still doesn't work. And I uh, was able to open up the development build on my phone. Something to know about if you're gonna test it out on your phone is you need to plug in your phone uh, and then connect it to your computer in order for the Expo development build to be able to connect to the um, the server, the Expo server. Um, so anyway, that's my final suggestions. Again, if you have any suggestions, help, be sure to check out the comment section below. Make sure to like the comments that you think were very helpful or the questions that you really had. Also give any advice. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.